Hi, my name is Ollie Bergman. My senior sponsor was Ryan Trapiccio. My um, mentor was Brian Klotz, and my project is the lack of blue collar workers in the nation. So, what is a blue collar worker? Um, blue collar workers are the employees whose jobs are mostly physical labor jobs. So, some examples would be like manufacturing, working on oil rigs, construction, mining, electrical, carpentry, and plumbing. Will this work now? Or come over here. So, the decline of um, blue collar workers. Um, so right now, for a lot of these, manufacturing mostly, um, it's legal for big corporations to shut down manufacturing facilities in the U.S. and send it overseas because it's cheaper. And with the slave laborers, it makes it a lot cheaper for the manufacturer and for the export of it. And with that, the Obama administration has been pushing harder for even more free trade Deals that will allow bigger corporations to ship more jobs out of the country, which leaves more people from here out of a job. So this first graph, this one right here, shows um, the decline of manufacturing between 1970 and 2016. So like over here would be more of like the, all jobs in manufacturing and as the years go on, especially by like 1990 was the main hit of when blue collar jobs started to decline. So the second graph right here was the change in manufacturing employment from 1990 to 2016 and also 1999 to 2016. And then this graph here shows the unemployment during 2010 by level of education. So here being a doctorate degree going down to like the GED or less than a high school diploma. So how to promote blue collar work? Um, the number one thing that we could do is change the stigma that people have of blue collar work because mostly that is like, you know, you're just kind of dumb and couldn't go to college. No offense, you're, you're not dumb. <laughs> but um, I think with the right like mind shift, we can um, kind of show and come to an understanding that people that worked in blue collar like went there as like their own idea that they didn't want to go to college or anything more rather than they couldn't make it into college so they had to go for this trade. I think another good thing that we could have that we could do is start like partnering with schools and like high schools and trade schools to try to get people into these jobs because at least to what I've noticed, even in this school, a lot of it's like pushing kids more like so here's what people think of college, and the majority of that is only shown to like you need to go to college you after high school is the only correct option versus a trade school where you could go out, get paid in an apprenticeship, while also learning like getting your journeyman's license in electrical or anything like that. You could be paid to learn and also paid on the job so you could go out of that schooling with little to no debt and you're already $15,000 over whoever went to college and have $100,000 debt. And another thing is like to show like what I just said is cheap schooling. The majority of um, these jobs to get in for all the schooling and stuff, it's anywhere probably between like three to five thousand, so not as much money as your typical hundred thousand dollar, like thirty thousand a year for four years, and job security, which most blue collar work you could you start off low and then as you keep getting older you gain more experience and you can keep your job when it's needed so some profile of a learner competency some 
a lot of um, the ones that I used was being adaptable and kind of changing my mind on how um, these work and to try to change the outcome. Um, Open-minded, I had to um, learn and accept some of the stuff that I learned instead of like learning that I couldn't push the way that I wanted to change this and I had to kind of accept how everything was going and f figure out a different way to come up with an outcome. And knowledgeable, I um, learned with depth and did a lot of research on this project trying to figure out what the problem was and come up with my solution. So my conclusion, my initial deadline was going to be fairly long as this isn't like an overnight process. So I was hoping that in around five years, the blue collar workforce would increase by about 5%, which right now it's only sitting at about 13.9% overall. Um, so I'm going to be more of the change with um, getting into this workforce, electrical work, and um, I'll, I'll try to adv advocate by speaking about it and informing people more about what these type of workforces are like. And with um, my p paid apprenticeship and getting good pay, too, is another good benefit for it. With overtime opportunities as well, um, especially like when there's a big job and you have short amount of time to get it done, you need to work as long as you can to get that done. And um, some promotions as well, um, management within hopefully 10 years when physical labor will lessen, which helps as you age and get older. So the reflection that I have is what I would have done differently. I would have um, narrowed down the focus more because it was quite broad on what I did and I thought that, that would maybe make it a little bit easier when it turned out to make it a little bit harder because there's so many areas to focus on and I think it would have been a little bit easier to just focus on one specific trade versus trying to get them all. I think if I would have um, focused more on just one, which most likely would have been electrical, it would have helped me find an outcome and figure out the problem a little bit easier and be able to come up with a better solution. And I think I would have been better able to speak to the people about the benefits of this trade rather than not knowing much about the individual parts. I think if I would have narrowed down my research, I would have had more time to look into why there's so much emphasis on going to college and how I um, could have helped change around that negative stigma of going to college versus going to the blue collar workforce. So here are all of the um, sites that I used to help me on my research. Are there any questions? So Ollie, thank you for your presentation. But why do you think the decline of blue collar jobs is important for our society and what lasting impact might that have? Well, so the importance of blue collar work is that a lot of it's like more physical labor, like building a house or plumbing or like you like going, waking up in the morning when it's dark and turning on your lights to go get a glass of water. I absolutely like that. So that would be one of the things that's not really there if you don't have these blue collar people to work and help to get you water, get you lights or build your house. And so they're very important because they're one of the main jobs that you can't really change and put a robot in there to do. Mr. Miracle. Uh, thank you, Ollie. That was very informative. I enjoyed it. I have uh, two questions. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You mentioned that that you uh, see or hope for a 5% increase 
in, in amount of blue collar workers. Yes, sir. Um, how did you arrive at that 5% and will that meet the needs gap in, so, the, in these fields? I think 5% would be a good number. So from 13.9 to 18% even, it would still be pretty low. But I think if you were able to start smaller, then after one little step, you can start taking more bigger steps into getting more people there. I don't think that the 5% would meet the job need that they have, but I think that it could help a little bit in getting at least a couple more people's foot through the door to then eventually getting a lot of people. So sort of a jump start to perpetuate momentum in yes, those sir. fields? Okay. Um, my other question was, or is how do you envision yourself advocating for these fields and in, in, in what ways? So I think that would be good, like um, what you did yesterday with um, Jesus and Emily and Alex, to be able to go to schools and instead of just like advocating like your college experience, trying to get kids to figure out that blue collar work isn't actually as bad as the stigma says it is and that it's actually really good paying jobs and that you could actually go in right away after high school and you could still make a decent living without any type of debt. So would you be willing, for example, next December to come back and, and help me and be a guest speaker for trade schools? Yes, sir, I would. Thank you. So as a business owner myself, a blue collar business owner and somebody like Brian, what can we do with students who are your age to get them into these different fields? Because the, there's a huge decline in number of people who even want to work these type of jobs. What would, as a business owner, what would you suggest that we do to help get folks like yourself to go work for us? Well, I think one major thing that could be good is like getting something online because a lot of kids are more technically advanced these days and they'd like to see something like that. So maybe if you put something like online to show kind of what your job does and kind of describe it, then I think kids would be a little bit easier to stumble upon it. And it might catch their eye and have someone like, ooh, well, this kind of looks cool. I might want to go do that for a little bit and see what it is. Okay, I have a couple questions. Um, did you look into you personally into college versus the schooling for, did you want to be a lineman or an electrician? Um, so I'm actually going to go work to be a commercial electrician. So I'm going to be working on like schools and hospitals and some bigger um, areas like that. So is there schooling for that or is it just um, an there apprenticeship? There is. So it's all, you have to just go to the lineman school and the company that I'm going to go work for actually has that and they pay for it as long as you keep good grades. Oh, wow, okay. Um, so how do you suggest that us here change the narrative around what you described as a stigma for blue collar work? Would it be um, like offering more internship type things in those areas, having people come in and talk? I think partly try to get some internships going, but also the number one thing that I feel like is talked about here is where are you going to go to college? And it's kind of like, you know, you get this weird look when you say you're not going to. So I think that could be part of it too, is that like, make sure that the kids know that college isn't the only option that's acceptable. Do you feel like there's a way that we could prepare kids for this line of work versus just going to college? Uh, well, I think the difference at least between this and um the line of work is like don't just have them sitting in a classroom all day but like try to get them to sign up for like an ag shop or something hands-on where they could kind of learn some of these skills and maybe make money trades. in the summer yeah hey Ollie great job thank you okay um so you listed off a, a plethora of, of opportunities in the blue collar field so what kind of drives you towards working with electrical in the capacity that you plan to so 
The number one thing that drove me to go for electrical is actually my father worked for the same company that I'm going for. And since I was really young, I always wanted to follow in his footsteps and be an electrician like all young kids do. They can't follow their parents around and always want to be like them. And I think that just kind of stuck on with me on why I want to go electrical over anything else. Ollie, really great job. Love all the pictures of yourself. <laughs> uh, uh, I do have a question. How come you chose something in Montana versus like mountain parks here? Um, well, I've always wanted to go and explore. I'm kind of a little bit rambunctious and like to go see new places. So I thought Montana would be kind of a cool spot. I've always wanted to go up there. So I thought that this would be a good opportunity to go out and see new places and explore different areas. Uh, I'll, thank you for that answer. Uh, I also want to piggyback on something you said about um, intelligence and the blue collar worker. I think you and I were talking about that there is that stigma, which actually affected Brian when you said it, <laughs> but it's that stigma. If you don't go to college, you're not intelligent, but yet you made a really good point that this is a choice and it doesn't, your intelligence is not measured by whether you have a piece of paper saying you graduated from whatever. So thanks for bringing that up because I think more students need to hear that. Hopefully when they watch this, it'll reiterate that. And, um, but basically what I was gonna ask is, what are some things, you know, like as an English teacher, I'm always teaching to, for the students to be prepared to write to be successful in college because that's kind of what the emphasis has been. What kind of writing could I do better in English to help you be successful in this career? Um. So when your internship with Brian, what did you notice that you needed to know and be able to do uh, that was important because obviously there's writing involved in. So I think like that. the majority of like the writing that you'd have to do for at least electrical is like figuring out some of like the exact like code and everything of being an electrician and I don't think that there's a lot of like writing involved in it. I think like more of it's like talking and being able to present yourself in a way that somebody that you're trying to get to hire you would look and be like, okay, I see that he knows how to present himself well, and I'm looking at his former jobs and they look good. So I think a good way might be like learning how, because English is speech too, mm -hmm. maybe trying to figure out like how to get those kids to learn to be able to present themselves well. Awesome. So this is, I have kind of a two-part question. Okay. Maybe like a five-part, we'll see. Um, so one of the things you mentioned, again, as some other people brought up, is, is that stigma and um, like who is really promoting that? And I think of like celebrities like Mike Rowe, right, who's out there saying like this, this is awesome work, right? And, yeah. and those types of things. So I'm wondering, how can we, and I mean like the greater we, not just like you and, and, and us, but how can we really impact that mind shift and then like, maybe I wanna hear your thoughts on that, but then also I'm really interested, did you, were you able to do any research with students and parents and staff? Because I hear, oh, we're just promoting college, but then I also know, you know, like really over the past couple of years, that emphasis has seemed to not be as strong, right? And, mm -hmm. and that we're really trying to create all these different pathways of like whatever Ollie wants to do, let's make sure he's ready for that. Whatever, you know, student B wants to do, let's make sure they're ready for that. And so I'm just wondering, like, have you seen that shift and how might we impact that? So for your first question, I know that um, this stigma has been going on since like 1960. And I know like, especially in like the 1970s, they were more pushing college so that you didn't have to go to Vietnam and everything. So I think that it's like an age long stigma that it's just been there for a while that, you know, college is there and that you need to go if you want to be smart. And there's all of this. I don't, I'm not exactly sure exact, like the best way how you would be able to flip that around over a huge group of people. Cause 
there's always going to be those people who grew up always knowing, well, you know, this is what I've learned since I was young. You need to go to college to be smart. And I think that there, it's going to be hard to try to change that type of mindset when that's all you know. But I think, like, for the future generations, that it would be a good idea to kind of, like, teach them more that there are more options than just what your parents were taught and grandparents and all of them. And for your second question, I wasn't able to talk to more kids. I was just based off of more some of my experiences with everything. And then overall, so this capstone project, this, this capstone is still just in its second year. It's pretty much in its infancy still. Um, what might be some thoughts you have for students next year on their capstone or maybe overall, like what's like your biggest takeaway from, from this capstone? Like what are you taking with you from this capstone onto your next journey? Uh, I think the biggest thing that I've gotten from this is that, you know, you're not a kid anymore and that when you have problems, you have to kind of figure it out on your own and that people aren't just going to hold your hand and walk you through it all the time. So I think the biggest thing that kind of hit me in the head was, you know, as there are people that can't help me, like Miss Stewart generously helped me to figure out what I need in my portfolio and everything. But for the main part of it, I actually had to buckle down and get it done myself without being told step by step what to do. It's a good skill. Um, just a couple more questions. So do you think that maybe we should be honest about the pay and what that looks like of college versus um, blue collar jobs? Do you think that would help students understand the costs of life, what you get paid, what you have to work? Yes, I think that that would be beneficial, but then also at the same time, you know, it's not more of like, because I think electricians, you could start off, I think, like 19 an hour and go all the way up to like a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, but it's not like you just get all that money because there's still stuff that you do have to like pay for and stuff. So it's not like, because if kids want to go to college, I'd say let them go to college because if that's what they want to do. But I think that the money could help in learning that, you know, college, I could, you could go out and get a hundred thousand dollar debt for something that you don't need versus going into the blue collar workforce and being able to make money earlier. So then maybe at the hopes you could retire sooner. Right. Um, so do you think there's a, a different way that we should present this for female versus male students? Do you think that, is it more, I mean, I know it's more male dominated, but is there in your studies, did you find that some women are choosing to go into this type of thing too? Um, so I actually have seen women in these fields and I think it is good that you could have both a man and a woman in there because like collaboration, you, they're always going to have a little bit of a different idea on it and I think it's always good that you have more than just one style of idea. Like if all men are in a group, then they're all going to come up with some solution pretty quick and a woman could be aside and think of something that they didn't even like care to think of and it could actually be very beneficial. Okay, thank you all for coming.